fuerte aplauso para Sven, por favor. Hey, hello. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is uh, Sven, short introduction. I work with WordPress and WordPress since 2008. And uh, I'm the CEO of SceneCraft and my last project is BuddyForms. It's a form builder for uh, creating posts and uh, user-generated content. So I dig deep into this uh, theme, Matic, and yeah, decide to talk about it here. I also have two children and love play music and traveling. That's one reason why I'm also here. So in this talk I want to uh, talk about the uh, user-generated content and the different strengths of user-generated content and how you can use and release it on your site and uh, use BuddyPress for it. So uh, in the beginning actually what is user-generated content? This is uh, content created by your users or customers actually in the moment when a user comes on your site, when there's any interaction, you start creating user-generated content. It's actually everything what is the data and is left for you. If it's Google Analytics, like before, a review or a blog post, it can be actually everything, a photo, a video or a comment. And, um, yeah. 47% of customers read up to three to five pieces of content before they decide to get a project from a company or get in contact to a company to use their service. And so user-generated content is maybe much more important for you than you thought before. It's the voice of your company and of your product outside your business. And it's really difficult to maintain and, uh, yeah, let's look into this. BuddyPress is a social network component. It often, I hear people like, ah, oh, it's a Facebook clone, I don't want to have the next Facebook on my site. <coughs> but it's uh, much more. It can be much more because it has many components and you don't need to use all these components on your site. You maybe don't need groups or activity streams, but the profile, the basic component of BuddyPress can be really important for you and can be a window to your customers and to the user-generated content. So if you only look at BuddyPress as a hub for user-generated content and for your users to communicate to you, it can be really useful. And don't look at it as a Facebook clone. You don't want to create the next Facebook but you have a website, you have interaction with your customers. And in this moment, you have a social connection to your customers. They give you something. Even if it's a bad review or if it's a bad comment, they give you something and this is user-generated content. This is often something which people don't think about much. They create their website and they make everything nice and make the SEO for their products, but they not think about what is user-generated content and I have, how can I handle it and how can I get the best benefit out of it. So with BuddyPress, you have first of all a profile. You have a centralized profile for all the views your user maybe need. In WordPress we have many plugins and all these plugins that bring different views into your website. Some have my account pages and the other one maybe have the same my account page. And then your users get lost on your site searching for the place. If they search for the product or for changing the address, they have maybe different places even for finding the how-tos or communicate to your support. And then they get lost on your site. And if they get lost on your site, this is user frustration and then they go away from your site. Because this is the feeling what they consume. And this they consume mostly before they buy something. So we must be really carefully to centralize things to the user profile and uh, you can do this with BuddyPress. And the same as with, uh, you have with BuddyPress activity stream, you can use this to generate data. I will come to this later. Groups and attachments API are also interesting. If you have support, you can bring people into BuddyPress and you have in the profile, you have the support groups they need and you connect this with 
the services you need, but then your user don't need to go to another service. They have all in the profile and easy accessible for them. So, yeah, that's what I said before, actually. I did this uh, slide, but it's really difficult for me. I will talk more free. Um, the benefit is to find everything, actually, what the user needs in one place. So if you have product reviews, they can find the product reviews, they can find the My Account, the orders, or the support, and this will give them uh, a good feeling and also create trust. And trust is what we need with user-generated content. Because people go to other places like Facebook, Twitter and co, and they talk about you. This is also user-generated content. And if you start well on your site, if you serve them well, if you give them trust and one place where they find everything transparent, this will be the first step to have a great multiplicator of user-generated content. So yeah, there can be everything in, I just wrote some, like my account, my reviews, my posts. You can add these things, like newsletter settings, support, and maybe what is useful for your business. If you have a learning site, add the courses into the BuddyPress profile. If you are a university, put your courses in there. There are endless opportunities. I think many of you here have their own business and can reflect by themselves what makes sense in their way. So and this is uh, one big point which I found out is guest posts. Because uh, let your viewers write about the subject of your site can give you a huge benefit. It's a great for SEO and it's also great for your growth strategy. Because if someone writes something about you, he's more willing to share it somewhere. So if you bring the user into your platform, and feel, make him feel, become a part of it. He's more willing to share his content, and this is user-generated content. And if you have an example of uh, uh, what this can be, it can be how-to documentation, a showcase, uh, it can be a story, how they used your product, or um, yeah, any relevant content. And most of the time when I talk to my customers about this, they tell me, no, we don't want this. We, we don't want guest posts, we have spam or whatever. But I think this is a wrong view. You get the guest posts and you have moderation. And you don't need to show every post. Before we have forums, we have the problem that we are afraid of bad feedback in the forum and then we have to communicate with these customers which are actually trolls and try to play with us. But with guest posts, you offer, please write the guest post, but you can moderate it, you don't need to publish it, but if you publish it, if you feel it's good for you, people can comment on it, like before, in the forums. So you have an interaction, you have a communication, but you have full control of the content on your site. So it's much better than a forum, and just think about user-generated content also like guest posts. You can give different buttons for different topics, so you exactly funnel people to their topic. Then they write about what they know. And this is, in the end, also a huge feedback. Some customers came back to me and said, wow, they, they, they tell us about what the frustration of the product, where they get stuck, why they couldn't use it, or and then we can use this information and uh, improve our product, improve our service or strategy. So uh, to use guest posts is much more than just a blog post. It's the deepest feedback you can get from your audience. And uh, it's a great feedback because even if they tell you your product sucks and you just took our time, you have the mail and you can contact and you can write please, can we have a short communication about it? Or why, what's up exactly? And then you get an interaction. And I found out that these people in there become the best customers. They, they will fall in love with your company and uh, yeah, it can be really powerful. So uh, often the question is, how can I use user-generated content for my business, for my e-commerce site? And one I said already, bring the different views of a 
shop into the profile so people don't search around for it. Bring the product reviews to this place so people have all their reviews and can find their reviews in one place. And uh, same with, you can make start playing with them, like achievement system, like points, hey, you have written three blog posts, you are now a gold member, or whatever. There is a space to, to use this creatively. I just saw I need to hurry up a bit. Same for social sharing and other links. You know these Google Places, if you have a local shop or customers with a local shop, it's super important to have reviews on these places. If you have a bakery or a small shop and you don't have these reviews in there, you not pop up if people walk around your, your shop. So you can generate these links directly to the form where they fill out and review it. Put it in the profile, make a tab, and then they have one click to this places review and they give you the review and you have a big benefit and this is user generated content. Often people misunderstood user generated content in our times. It's all the content people create. It's even if someone comes to your site and run away, you see it in Google Analytics and you have user generated content, you see how they jump away. So yeah, take it serious, I think it's important. Also, WordPress is all about democratizing publishing and owning your data. Why do we store all the user-generated content outside? If you look at it, we own our posts, our pages, our post meta. But already comments, how many people use discuss and bring the comments out of the system? I think for our growth strategy, if we want to become big, we need to save our data. It's really important. Don't give it away. Same for user and user meta. It's stored in your database, and if you grow, even if you switch the system, any database engineer can make great information out of it. So, what you should consider, or what you should think about is, you can bring all the data from other SaaS services into BuddyPress. Also, you can check deeply, is there another alternative? For example, you have here in Spain, you have MailPoet. This is all in WordPress, while you need MailChimp. Or you, there, there, there are different, different, there are always different plugins which have this inbound, either in WordPress or outside in a SaaS service. And if it's in a SaaS service and you can have it in WordPress, stored in the user metadata, take this, if it's possible, take this solution because it's more safe for the future of your business. If they turn off this SaaS service, all data is lost. So you have no connectivity and you have no control over your user-generated content. I think it's really important. And BuddyPress can help you with this. Because often you need SaaS services, but if you have them in BuddyPress, we have JavaScript, we have PHP, we can put a trigger and we can save the same data or even put a link or a, a mark to the database so we know this data was used on our site or this service. And this is really easy. If you use BuddyPress, you have X-Profile fields. And with X-Profile files, um, you can save, get and delete data. I wanted to go into this deeper, but uh, the time is running away, so i make it shorter. If you have anywhere on your site and you have any interaction, you can use Ajax or any technique, just save it, save it to the user and keep it for your later, later usage. Even if you don't know now what is this for you. If your business grows someday, someone will come and ask you, do you have this data for me? And then you can say, I have all in the X profiles. And the same is with the activity stream. There are many, many activities all around uh, your user. And it's not only for the user, it's for you. Save this activity. It's really easy to use BuddyPress to save any activity on your site. Sure, the most easy one is a new post, a new comment, a new member, a new friendship request. But it can be everything important for you, for your business and growth strategy. And any interaction with other RPEs, catch them and save them for later usage. This is user-generated content, and it's often everywhere in the net, but not in your hands. 
I think with this talk I want to make you aware this data is important for you. Keep it safe and don't be like, oh, it's so fancy, this service, it looks so modern, so nice, so, but think further, what does it do for you with the data? Is it you, the data of the company? Will they grow with the data? Or do you grow with this data? Is it just fancy or is it also for the future of your business and for your success? Yeah, and again, I wanted to go into this deeper, but it's a short session. You can super easily save any activity on the site in BuddyPress. Create an activity and uh, yeah, time is running, just three minutes left, so if you're interested in this, talk to me later or go to the body press. I have put down the codex links in there. So, there are also resources from the activity stream. From, there was a great talk on the WordCamp Europe from Boone about how to uh, use the activity stream for transparency of activities on your site. Yes, one last and quick... Uh, Feedback, also the, these Dropboxes and Google Drives and Meta Drives and all over, over the place where you maybe ask your customers to store data. You can do this in BuddyPress. There's a Buddy Drive plugin. It's from the core developers of BuddyPress and it has the same functionality like Dropbox. So if you're interested to also keep the files, which is also user-generated content, safe under your hood, Take a look. Yeah, that's uh, all. Thanks a lot. I hope this was helpful for you. Any question? Alguna pregunta? Todos a la vez, no? What do you think about the privacy regulations? All the data. Yeah, uh, it depends on how, from which side you look at it. If your user creates an account and you ask in the ADP about, in the terms of use, I'm not a lawyer. Everything what I said, you should maybe talk to your lawyer. We have in Europe, we have different laws, always changing all the time. Even in, uh, the, the, the smallest data can be a problem, but... Uh, this is more technical from the business view of your business side. Um, yeah. No, it is okay, yeah. but it depends on how you have your terms of your website. Okay. Well, it's problematic. Well, it's problematic if you don't just like disclose it with your customers or visitors of your website. So, um, I mean. As Sven said, you always have to talk to a lawyer about this, but um, with the new law coming in the end of May, things are going to be tougher, of course, but um, a lot of things really don't change to the bad side so much if you take care of your terms and conditions on your website. So you can go ahead and um, tell the people what's going on on your website, and you have to disclose it, necessarily. And then you can collect data. I mean, that's not going to go away. I mean, it's going to be going to get a bit more complicated. And also, you, you most of the time you don't need the IP address. Yeah. So you can collect this data anonymously. It's just for your reference. And if somebody is willing to fill out a form and give you an email address and send you a guest post, you have a different relation. I think at that moment you are able also to collect this data. But I'm not a lawyer, I'm a software developer and uh, this only my two cents. Okay, thanks. More questions? In your experience, uh, how is uh, the body press working with the WooCommerce or with any other yeah, e-commerce? It works uh, super great. I have also a free plugin on the WordPress org repository to bring all the my account pages into the body press and in the user data. So you can also manage the visibility settings in BuddyPress and the shipping and billing address in BuddyPress and it's all integrated for you.
Ok, un fuerte aplauso, por favor, para el... A ver,